In Genesis chapter 4, Adam and Eve have sons named Cain and Abel. And then at the end of the chapter, they have another son, Seth, who will be in the line of Christ. Many people believe that Adam and Eve were not actual people. They see them as characters in an allegory. However, there are four reasons why I believe they were actual people, and I submit them to you for your consideration. Reason number one, the Bible text. The account of Adam and Eve is written as historical, with no use of allegorical words such as like or as. Reason number two, the chronology. The Gospel of Luke traces Jesus' lineage all the way back to Adam. Reason number three, the Apostle Paul. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul declares that sin came through one man, Adam, and that redemption came through one man, Jesus. He calls Jesus the second Adam. And then reason number four, God did not create death. If God used a process taking millions of years to bring forth humanity, a process of life, death, and adaptation, then that means that God created death. But God is not the author of death. Death entered in as a consequence of humanity's sin, humanity's disobedience. For these four reasons, the Bible text, the chronology, the Apostle Paul, and the fact that God did not create death, I believe that Adam and Eve were actual people. Thus, death had a beginning, specifically in Genesis 3, and it has an end. Believers come to life spiritually. They're born again through faith in Christ. And as per 1 Corinthians 15, Believers will be given new bodies fit for eternity with Christ. No more death. Now let's look at the hearts of their sons, Cain and Abel, which are revealed in the context of offerings that each of them brings to God. Here's what we see in verses 3 to 5. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. So the Lord respected Abel's offering, but did not respect Cain's offering. Now, Scripture does not say here what was unacceptable about Cain's offering. The thought that he offered the result of his own labor versus a blood sacrifice may have merit. However, both types of offerings, blood sacrifices and grain offerings, are later introduced in Leviticus. Probably more significant is the heart with which they gave their offerings. In Hebrews chapter 11, we learn that Abel's offering was given in faith. Thus, it's clear that Cain's offering was not given in faith. And this becomes obvious by Cain's response. He gets angry, and he later kills his brother Abel. Cain has a bitter, self-centered heart that lacks faith in God. He doesn't get what he wants, so he gets angry and he lashes out. Let's be those who guard against bitterness against inner anger, who repent of it, who release offenses and disappointments into God's hands, who walk in love and forgiveness, who cultivate a heart of faith, like Abel, a person who trusts God, who bring life to others, not death, and who live forever because of what Jesus, the second Adam, did for us. He conquered death. Thanks for listening.